Hello, this is Kendrick Coleman, and welcome back to this fourth video in this series where we're looking at the vSphere web client. We had already gotten our hosts set up and really added them into vCenter itself. Now we need to go ahead and we need to start configuring the networking for it. So we'll go over here to our home page where we start looking at the vCenter home, and we kind of see we have a few different things here. Of course, right now we have what's really standard with every single host that's being built is you have a standard vSwitch that's already connected to it, and it already has a standard network, which is this VM network. What we want to do is we actually want to add a distributed switch. I really focus on the distributed switch because it's, it's sort of a best practice and it's what's used primarily with Enterprise Plus licensing. So if you're not using Enterprise Plus licensing, sorry, but we are going to just be configuring distributed switches and distributed port groups and stuff like that in this lesson. So to get started, let's figure out where we need to start adding this. So we can actually go to this the home stage where we can actually look at distributed switches. We can go in here. And then we can kind of see that, here you go, we can add and create a new distributed switch. So let's go ahead and let's do that. For simplicity, we'll just call this DV switch zero, but of course you can call it anything you want. And we're going to tie this to the Louisville data center. One thing to keep in mind is that a distributed virtual switch is not tied to a specific cluster. It's not tied to a specific vCenter. It's tied to a data center, or as you can see, or a network folder. Now, it does this because of a few different reasons. So think of if you have a few different clusters that serve a few different purposes and you can have a single DV switch for every single host in another cluster. What if you wanted to make sure that all the hosts in different clusters don't see the DV switch for a different cluster? Well, of course, if you create a bunch of DV switches and you only put DV switch 0 to cluster 1, DV switch 0 to cluster 2, um, stuff like that, it's going to end up being a little bit messy because you can, of course, you can add hosts to multiple DV switches or you can only add it to one DV switch. But to, clean, to keep a clean line of separation, you could also create multiple data centers. It depends on the way you design you, your vSphere environment, but if you just define different data centers, only a DV switch can be attached to that data center. So we'll go ahead and we will attach this to this data center right here. We'll click next and of course we want to use 5.10 because this is what adds a few more features such as the health check and network recovery and rollback. Of course with all the old features of, of NIOC and NetFlow and port mirroring. So we'll go ahead and click next and my hosts only have two uplinks so I really don't need to add more than that. So I'll just keep it at two. And also, it always creates a default port group, and then it would have new distributed port group as the name. I don't really like to do that. We're going to go, and we're going to create some new port groups anyway. So let's go ahead, and we'll click Next, and we'll go ahead, and we will click Finish. As you can see, the task is up here, and it's already created. So now you have a few options. We can actually look at this. We can start adding the port groups here. We can start adding host into it. Uh, we can look at the actions tab we can see that you can start doing the same actions that are over here yet over here or we can drill into it and this is what i want to do is of course you always have this get summary uh, sorry this get starting page where you can start adding these pieces in as well but let's not do that so we can look at the summary page we can see the features that are in there and we can see what version this is at as well at the same time we can also go to the manage section this is where i want to go and i want to set a few of the different settings so if we look at the, uh, as you can see in the topology, nothing's really set. And at the same time, if you can see, we have the ability to add more stuff. So we can add a new port group, add a host, and edit, the, edit everything while we're at it. So let's go ahead and go to the properties because I want to go ahead and edit this. So the first thing I want to do is I always want to make sure that really network IO control is enabled. There's really no reason it should be disabled but because it's a best practice just to keep it enabled. The, you can also edit the uplink name. So if you're creating multiple DV switches, you can change this to the management uplink one and management uplink two. But I really don't care to do that. I think keeping it as uplink one and uplink two is fine for me because I only, I'm really mimicking a 10 gig environment by only having two NICs on each host. So that's what I'd like to do. Under the advanced setting, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to 9,000. Of course, I like to keep it at jumbo frames in case just anything else is going to use it down the line. It's a lot easier to go ahead and set it now instead of having to wait till it later. There's also this default max number of ports per host. 
The vSphere 5 limitation is actually 4,096 <laughs> ports per host. But to keep it simple, I'll just keep it at 4,000 because more than likely, this is probably not going to change. And at the same time, I'm also going to change this to, since I have an HP ProCurve switch here at home and I'm not using a Cisco switch to be able to use CDP, I'm going to go ahead and change it to the Link Layer Discovery Protocol. And I'm actually going to set it to both, so it advertises and listens. You can do that both, even if it is CDP or if it is Link Layer. You can also set the name, if your name, if you want to have an email address or anything like that, but it's really not that important. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and update the properties of the switch. It's already updated, so really we don't need to go check anything else in here right now. But let's go ahead and we can probably go ahead and get started and start adding our port groups to it. So to do that, we can go back here and we can actually look at this uplink port groups tab. Oh, sorry, not uplink port groups, because these are actually the uplinks to the actual host itself, and it actually has two. So, I'm sorry, let's go back and we will go to the distributed port groups. So we go to distributed port groups, and from here, you can actually go ahead, if you had multiple V switches, you could do it, or sorry, multiple DV switches, you could do it from within here. So you would actually be able to choose from here, and you can say, this is my management port group, and I'm going to choose it to be on the DV switch zero. So you could have multiple DV switches. So it's a simple place to actually have mass administration. Now from here, there's a, there's a new feature within here within 5.1, which is called port allocation model. Port binding, if we remember that, we usually have static binding because it's probably the most secure way to do it. And then we have ephemeral binding, which is a no binding method. And the ephemeral binding is really used in a lot of vCloud director implementations, but we like to keep it at static binding because it is more secure. In vSphere 5.0 and below, everything was at fixed. So you'd only have 128 ports, but say you had, if this was a regular port group and VM129 was coming online, it would say, I'm sorry, there's no more port groups available to be able to tie this VM in. So we're going to go ahead and we have to either up, increase the number of ports or go ahead and change the, or put it onto a new different port group. So a best practice is to keep it elastic because what this says is that the number of ports is going to be at 8, but say when number 9 comes on, you need to add that ninth port to it. This is actually going to dynamically increase the number of ports in the port group as well. So you don't need to worry about keeping track and what's actually going to happen with all the, the types of port groups. So from here, I'm going to add this. Nothing's really changed right here, so you can change, add a VLAN, put VLAN trunking in if you want to have a different number of ports to be able to use so but I'm just gonna keep it as a regular VLAN now a really cool thing is you can go ahead and you can start customizing the advanced settings during the port group creation so I'll go ahead and I'll come here and as you can remember this used to be set to reject and this was always accept and accept those were the used to be the old defaults but the new defaults are to reject everything so let's go ahead and we'll keep that because it keeps it more secure I never suggest to actually use traffic shaping because it's hardly ever used. And if you are needing to use it, you probably should be using QoS on the back end. We also have this teaming and failover section, and this is actually pretty important. Now, for most port groups, I'm going to want to use route based on physical NIC load. It's just the best practice now within VMware to actually use route based on physical NIC load because it's the best load balancing algorithm. If you, if there's different times when you need to use IP hash, source MAC hash, originating virtual port, depending on the type of networking application that you're trying to do, whether it's LACP where you would need route based on IP hash or anything like that. Um, by default, it's usually originating virtual port, but we want to keep it as route based on physical NIC load because it's just the best way to do it. And also, if, if you use explicit failover order, this is when you could keep it and you can say, I want to make sure it happens in this sort of order. But we want to keep everything around based on physical NIT load and let vSphere sort of be the smarts and letting it decide where it needs to send traffic. And that's about it. We don't need to set up anything with monitoring or set up any port blocking. We'll go ahead, keep these additional settings as default, and we'll go ahead and we'll click complete. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another port group. I'm going to just kind of show you what I do for iSCSI and NFS. I actually create a different port group for all these because I want a different VM kernel port group to actually be binded to all of them. So I'm going to say this is iSCSI MPIO-0. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pretty much follow the same exact rules as I was doing before. Changing nothing here. I'm going to change my VLAN to 4 because this is 
of course, what's going to be in my own lab. Your, of course, your, your mileage may vary. But from here, I actually want to just set uplink 1. And I want to put uplink 2 in the unused uplinks because what happens is, is I need to be able to make sure that I can bind to this adapter. When I bind to this adapter, it's going to say there's another uplink in the active uplinks. So it's going to make you just change that. So I'm going to go ahead, click next, and finish this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish up and create a nice guzzy dash one where the uplink is actually uplink two and uplink one is in, is in the unused. I'm also going to create an NFS port group where we actually have both the uplinks active and let vSmear be smart about where it wants to send traffic during NFS actions. At the same time, I want to go ahead and I'm going to create a vMotion, fault tolerant, and some other port groups. So I'll be right back. All right, now that I have all my port groups created, I can actually go ahead and make sure that it is all actually on the port group that I, or sorry, the switch that I wanted. So I can go actually back here in my DV switch. I can go ahead, double click on my DV switch right here. And it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna say, there we go. So we've actually added just seven distributed port groups to this DV switch. So that's going to be all for this lesson. Next lesson, we're going to look at actually adding the host to the virtual distributed switch and creating VM kernel port groups. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.